Hey everyone, it's Kristen from Quebeca, and in this Silhouette Print and Cut tutorial, I'll show you some of the different ways that you can find and create custom color palettes for Print and Cut in Silhouette Studio. If you watched my earlier video on getting better color print results for Print and Cut, you'll recognize this color chart that I have open here. It's available as a free printable studio file, and if you haven't downloaded it yet, I'll have a link in the area below the video to where you can download it. We're going to set up a printable page for our custom color palettes, and I'll be using this file as my template. If you don't have this file, then you can create your swatches using the Draw Shape tool from the left menu. You can make swatches using squares, circles, or whatever shape you'd like. Before I do anything with this file, I want to save it to my hard drive under a different name so I don't mess with the original file. I'll just save it as custom color chart and hit OK to save it. I tend to work with color palettes that have six to eight different colors in them. Sometimes you'll have more, sometimes less, and sometimes you'll find yourself adding more colors as you go, but I typically start with six to eight colors. So I'll click and drag to select all of the swatches in the longer rows, and then I'll hit the backspace key on my keyboard to delete them. The top two rows have eight swatches each, and these are what we'll use to make our custom color chart page. I'll click and drag to select all of the individual swatches in the top row, and then I'll click Ctrl or Command plus G to group them, and I'll repeat this for the second row. Now that the rows are grouped, I'll click and drag to select both, and then I'll click Ctrl or Command plus C to copy them, then Ctrl or Command plus V to paste. While the copied rows are selected, I'll click and drag them down under the first two rows, and then I'll repeat the copy and paste process until I have as many rows as I can fit on the page. After I have a bunch of rows of swatches on the page, I'll delete out the default color chart text at the top of the page, and I'll open the text style window from the far right menu, select a font, then click the text tool on the left menu to type in my new title. After that, I'll adjust the text size down so it fits well on the page, and I'll open the color fill window from the far right menu and fill the text with black. Now that I've changed the title on the page, I can actually fit a couple of additional rows of swatches, so I'll repeat the copy and paste process again. My swatch rows are kind of a jumbled mess now, so I'll click and drag to select all of them, and then I'll open the transform panel from the far right menu. And I'll go down and click the vertical spacing button, which will evenly space all of the rows vertically. Next I'll go up and click to align the rows horizontally, and I'll click the left button in the center area to align everything at the center of the page. And then I'll use the up arrow on my keyboard to nudge the swatches up to where I want them. Finally, I'll go up to the top menu and click to open the object drop down menu, and I'll click ungroup to ungroup the rows to individual swatches. It's a good idea to save the file at this point so you don't lose any of the changes that you've made to the page. Okay, now it's time for the fun part, which is making our custom color palettes. There are a lot of different ways that you can do this, as well as websites that will help you out. I'm just going to show you a few options in this video. The first site that I want to show you is called colorhex.com, and on the main page it has the hex codes for users' favorite swatches. Remember, we can use hex codes, RGB or red, green, blue values, or HSL, hue saturation light values to create colors in Silhouette Studio. I can already see that some of the colors on the page won't really work for us for print, like these bright greens here, because they're too bright and will shift and become much more muted when I print them out. If you haven't seen my video on getting better color results for print and cut, a link to that should be popping up right about now. In that video, I explain why printed colors are typically more muted than colors on the screen. For our first custom palette, I'm going to use some of the colors on the main page here. I like this minty green in the top row, so I'll click on that swatch, and when I do, you can see that a page will open with lots of additional information about this color. You get the hex code, as well as the color values for a number of different color spaces, including RGB and HSL. And lower on the page, you'll also get a range of shades for the color with their hex values, as well as hex values for tints of the color. So it makes things super easy if you want a darker shade or a lighter tint of the color for your color palette. If you click on any of the individual shade or tint swatches, you'll be taken to a page that's just like this one for the swatch you've chosen, which is really helpful. I'll hit the back arrow in my browser to go back to the original color, and I'll get the RGB values for it, click back over to Silhouette Studio, 
click to select the first swatch at the top left of the page and open the color fill panel from the far right menu. Next, I'll click to open the advanced options on the panel and I'll input the RGB values for the color in the corresponding input areas there and hit enter on my keyboard to set the changes. Okay, now we have our first custom color swatch. I'll continue selecting swatches from the front page at colorhex.com and using the RGB values over in Silhouette Studio to create the swatches. For some colors, I'll use darker shades or lighter tints to customize my palette in just the way that I want it. The final color palette would be great for winter theme designs with its warm grays, wintry blue, mint green, pink, and plummy colors. We used the RGB values to create the colors for our first color palette, and I'll admit that it's a little bit fussy because you're working with three different numbers for each color. So you either have to have a good memory, or you have to click back and forth between the website page and Silhouette Studio to get the values. You can also write them down, and you can click to highlight each number, then press Ctrl or Command plus C to copy it, and Ctrl or Command plus V in the corresponding color input area in Silhouette Studio to paste it. Grabbing the hex values is much more efficient because you're just dealing with one alphanumeric value. So for the second palette, we'll create our colors using just hex values. Colorhex.com also has pre-made palettes that you can use. Up at the top of the page, you can click on the latest palettes link to see the newest color palettes on the site. And there are almost 1300 pages of palettes to choose from at the time this video was recorded. You can also click on palettes to get a dropdown with additional options. I'll click Popular Palettes to see what palettes people are liking on the site. In addition, there's a search area toward the top of the palette pages where you can search palettes by keyword. I'll just search for Christmas to see what they have. I'm really liking this palette that's called Scandinavian Christmas, so I'll click into that and a page will open that has hex and RGB values for all of the colors in the palette. I'll click and drag to select the hex value minus the pound sign for the first color, which is a really bright red. Then I'll click back over to Silhouette Studio and select the first swatch in the second row. While it's selected, I'll click and drag to highlight the default hex value over in the color fill panel area, and I'll press Ctrl or Command plus V to paste the value for the red color. And there you can see it over on the color palette. I'll repeat this process for the darker teal color in the palette, and for the bright aqua, I know that's not going to print out anywhere near as bright as it is on the screen. So I'll click the hex value link to open the page for the color, then I'll click on a darker shade down in the shades area, and I'll choose a lighter, much more muted tint of the shade to use in the color palette. I'll click and drag to highlight the hex code at the top of the page for the color that I chose, and then I'll press Ctrl or Command plus C to copy it, and Ctrl or Command plus V to paste it in the hex input area back in Silhouette Studio. There are only five colors in this palette, so I'll fill out the rest of the palette with different shades and tints of a couple of the other colors in the palette, and then I'll quickly do a save so we don't lose the custom color palettes that we just built. Color Hex is a very useful and helpful site if you're looking for color palette inspiration. But what do you do if you want to make color palettes from specific images? The next site will allow us to do just that. It's the Canva Color Palette Generator, and when you go there you'll see a random default image and corresponding color palette with hex values for five colors that were picked from the photo. They even give the color names, which I think is pretty clever. I'm actually really liking this color palette, so let's set it up over in Silhouette Studio. First, I'll click somewhere in that first swatch area, and when I do that, a check mark will pop up to let me know that the color's hex value has been copied to my clipboard. This is basically the same as highlighting the value and clicking Ctrl or Command plus C, but it's quicker. I'll click back over to Silhouette Studio and select the first swatch in the next row. And then I'll click and drag to highlight the current hex value and press Ctrl or Command plus V to paste the value for the swatch from Canva. We'll have to remove the pound sign here since the color won't be set until we do. I'll repeat this process for the rest of the color swatches from the photo. And since there are only five colors in this palette, I'll click and drag in Silhouette Studio to select the last three color swatch circles and press backspace on my keyboard to delete them. Next, I want to create a color palette from an image that I choose, so I'll go back over to the Canva color palette generator and click the button that says Upload an Image. I'll choose one of the digital patterns from my Fresh Start digital paper set, click the Open button, and when I do this, the image and corresponding color palette will open in the Canva color palette generator. Pretty neat, right? 
I'll repeat the copy and paste process for all of the colors in the palette, just like I did with the default photo earlier. And then I'll delete out the swatch circles that I'm not going to be using. I'll do a quick save on the file to save the color palettes that I just added. All right, so the Canva color palette generator is super handy if you have an image on your computer that you wanna use to make a custom palette, but what if the image that you wanna use is on the web? The next site that we'll be checking out will allow us to do this. It's called Web Color Tools, and this site allows you to either upload an image, like the Canva generator did, or input a URL for a web image. I am a big time color lover, and I actually have a board over on Pinterest specifically for gathering color palettes and color inspiration. I've currently got over a thousand pins on the board and am adding more all the time, and I love to use these images to create palettes for my own projects. So I'll browse through the board and choose an image that I want to use to create a custom color palette. I love this one here with the muted rainbow colors. I'll click to open the individual image in Pinterest. Then I'll right click on the image and choose copy image address from the dropdown. Next, I'll go back over to the web color tools site, click into the load image from URL input area and press controller command plus V to paste the URL for the image. Finally, I'll click the load button to load the image. And when I scroll down the page at the bottom right, you can see that the site has created a palette of eight colors from the image. When I mouse over any of the colors, you'll see the values for the colors appear in the droplet image on the left. You have RGB, hex, and HSL values, and these are all usable in Silhouette Studio. With an image like this, you can see that there are limitations with this type of color palette generator. I wanted to see values for the muted rainbow of swatches at the top of the image, but I got a completely different color palette than I was expecting because the colors are randomly chosen and the image is a complex one with lots of different color variation. However, when you mouse over any of the areas of the photo, you'll be able to click any color to choose it. It's just that it's not in the default palette that's generated. Even though it wasn't what I expected, I still really like the color palette that was generated. It's really nice and earthy. So this will be our next color palette. I'll click the first color to choose it, and then I'll click and drag to highlight its hex value and press Ctrl or Command plus C on my keyboard to copy it. Next, I'll go back over to Silhouette Studio, click to select the first swatch in the next row, and paste the color's hex value into the input area in the color fill panel. I'll repeat this process for all of the colors in the palette. For the next palette, I'm going to choose a much simpler image from my Pinterest board, so the color palette that the site generates will be much more along the lines of what I was expecting. I love the soft and bright pastels in this image, so I'll click into it, right click on the image, and click copy image address from the dropdown. Then I'll go back over to the web color tools site and paste the URL into the input area and hit load. The color palette that's generated from the image is just what I wanted, so I'll copy the values one at a time and paste them over in Silhouette Studio to make my next custom palette. Then I'll save the file to save the palettes that I just added. The final site that I want to show you is along the lines of the Web Color Tools site, but on this site, you load the image and custom pick the colors yourself. I'll go back over to Pinterest and copy the image address for the muted rainbow image, the first one that we used on the Web Color Tools site. Next, I'll click into the input area, paste the URL for the image, and click the Go button. And when the image loads, I'll be able to mouse over any area and click to set the color and grab the hex value for it. After I click to select a color, I'll go down to the color code input area and click and drag to select just the values without the pound sign. Then I'll press Controller Command plus C to copy the value and head back over to Silhouette Studio to start setting up my next color palette. When I'm finished, you can see how different this color palette is than the one that we created from the same image on the Web Color Tools site. One last thing that I want to show you on this site. I clicked in solid color areas to create the palette from this image, but you won't always have this option, especially if you're using a photo to create your palette. If you click in an area that has gradation of color and shading, you'll get a swatch that's made up of a bunch of pixels of different colors. And you can click on any of those individual pixel areas to get the hex value for that specific color. So that's a really handy feature on this site. I have a few more color palettes to make, and I'll make those using a combo of the sites that we've covered in this video. When my page is filled with custom color palettes, I'll do a final save on the file and then print it. 
When I print the page, you can see that, as expected, many of the colors aren't quite as bright as they were on the screen, and there are some colors that have noticeably shifted, especially some of the darker blues and purpley blues. But overall, I'm really happy with how these printed, and many of the palettes, like this one with the pastels, look really great. Now you can go and create lots of your own custom color palettes using any of the sites that I featured today. I'll have links to all of the sites for your reference in the description area below the video or in the area below the video if you're watching on kbecca.com. In the next video in the series, I'll show you how you can use the custom color palettes that you create to make a full color print and cut image from a regular cut file. I hope that this video has been helpful for you, and if you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate it if you would give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll tune in again soon.